Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Cooking with Chef Aaron. Today, we're going to be studying for an Eastern Asia as we explore the country of uh, China. Now, this country was requested to me by none other than Monica Giulio once again. As always, thank you for your request. I'd like to give a big shout out to you. And I hope to receive more requests from other people sometime soon. Okay, so the cartoon I just showed you at the beginning was uh, actually um, a very obscure uh, children's cartoon, it seems. And it's called uh, The Story of Aku Joimpa. And uh, judging by the artwork here, it kind of looks like it could be a cross between like South Park and VeggieTales, except uh, child-friendly. <laughs> okay, so first things first, I'm going to talk about um, uh, China's uh, largest city, which is uh, Shanghai. And uh, as you can see here, I mean, it's very like futuristic to the point of looking like um, the headquarters of an evil villain in like a movie like Austin Powers. It kind of looks like that, um, as you can see here. It's very futuristic, and it just looks like uh, an evil villain could live there. <laughs> and uh, I really like how all the colors are uh, lit up at night um, because um, it looks very colorful. It looks very futuristic, and I just like the uh, design of everything in the city. Very unique designs. Okay, so now I'm going to shift my attention over to uh, Beijing, which is uh, the capital city of China. And as you can see here, it's very futuristic like Shanghai, except not as futuristic. Um, the buildings are still nice, uh, except uh, they're not really as uh, unique. They have more of a Western feel to them, but still good. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's other uh, Chinese uh, artifacts right here. Um, they're really interesting to look at, very unique in design. And that's, what to, and that's just what I've got to say about it. So now I'm going to talk about the rural areas of China now. And uh, as you can see here, um, this is uh, Tibet. This is the Tibetan um, region of China. And as you can see, it looks very similar to that of uh, Tajikistan because the mountains are very colorful. They're kind of the same hue, have the same hues to them. They look really nice the way they're uh, designed. And that's just what I've got to say about them. Okay, so to wrap up my review, I'm going to talk about the uh, rural areas of uh, China, like the mainland, uh, just mainland China. And uh, as you can see uh, here um, in these uh, pictures right here, uh, you can see a lot of uh, green vegetation. It's very surreal in design. And uh, I just like how all the mountains are have appeared, and uh, I just really like how all the vegetation looks. It's, it's very colorful, very green, and that's just what I got to say about the rural areas of China. Okay, so overall, I would probably have to give the country of China an A. Okay, now before we head up to uh, my kitchen, I did promise uh, I would uh, do a little something for you guys. And these are the uh, Macapuno cream filled cake bars. Yay! You remember I promised these in the last episode. So, uh, so to recap, these are basically uh, cake bars, kind of similar to Twinkies, and uh, they're supposed to have like some sort of filling in the middle, and Macapuno is kind of like this wet coconut filling. So uh, I'm going to open up this package right now. I'm going to tell you all what I think of it. So let's just see what's inside. This is going to be a blind taste test. All right, so this is what the packaging of one of the bars looks like. And uh, it looks kind of similar to uh, how you would s s open up a Twinkie, like 
before opening of a Twinkie. So uh, let's give this a shot. I want to see what the design looks like. Okay, and as you can see, it's kind of uh, coming, uh, come up in like a little bit of a muffin plastic. Like you have to take off the muffin plastic. Okay. And this is the design of the cake bar. It looks pretty good the way it is. Let's give this a taste. It's not bad. Not really chasing a lot of cream. I'm mostly just chasing the uh, cake itself. These aren't bad. Let me try another bite. Still not really chasing it. Let me try another one. Okay. Let me just rip it in half this time to see if there's can see anything. I don't really see the filling because uh, I just ripped it in half and it doesn't really match uh, here because as you can see uh, there's uh, some gooey filling here but I don't really see it inside here. It's weird, kind of disappointing, but it's still good. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the uh, Chinese uh, pakoda and uh, this is a more of an Indian uh, take on uh, Chinese cuisine. And to make it, the ingredients you'll need are as follows. We have one cup of uh, all-purpose flour here, one cup of semolina, one and one quarter cup of corn flour in this bowl, one quarter teaspoon of uh, baking soda, I have one carrot finely chopped, two cups of cabbage chopped, one cup of uh, spring onions uh, chopped, green onions, and I have uh, one teaspoon of vinegar in this bowl. And in this bowl I have uh, one tablespoon of soy sauce. I have one tablespoon of uh, tomato sauce in uh, this bowl. Two tablespoons of uh, ginger chili paste in this bowl. Two tablespoons of uh, garlic chili paste in uh, this bowl. And I have uh, two tablespoons of uh, red chili sauce in this bowl. We're going to get started right now. Okay. So to start off the uh, cooking process for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this uh, big stainless steel bowl right here, and to it I'm going to add uh, all of my uh, non-flour ingredients, so that excludes the uh, corn flour, the semolina, the all-purpose flour, and the uh, baking soda. So I'm going to start off by taking my uh, two cups of cabbage, and I'm going to place it all in here, like this. And I'm going to grab my uh, little spatula, I'm just going to kind of mix it all around just so it's all on the surface. That should be good. And to this I'm going to add my uh, green onions. So you want to add up all your green onions to the uh, cabbage as well. Mix it again. Make sure everything's well combined. And uh, the last vegetable I'm going to add is my uh, carrot. This is really starting to look colorful now, isn't it? Get all that carrot in there. Give it another mix. <laughs> the green onion wants to escape. Ah! Okay. Now I'm going to add uh, my uh, vinegar. So just add my vinegar, just like that. And uh, I'm also going to add uh, my uh, soy sauce. Make sure it's gets coated all around. So I'll just, just make sure it gets a fair coating all over. And I'm going to add my uh, sauces now. So here's my uh, tomato sauce. 
And I'm also going to add my uh, red chili sauce. And uh, I'm also going to take my uh, garlic chili paste, add it to the mix as well. And let's not forget the ginger chili paste, which is uh, right here. Okay, and I'm just going to mix this all around, give this a good mix. And it's really starting to look all nice, saucy, and colorful, just the way we want it to be. Okay, so now once you've uh, mixed out your filling well, it should look something like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, all my flowers, my semolina, my cornflour, and my uh, all-purpose flour, and I'm just going to add it all to the mixture and mix it again. So here's my semolina. Here's my uh, corn flour. And here is my all purpose flour. Okay, now let's see what happens when you mix it. As you can see, it's not as colorful anymore because we've added our flowers. But eventually, uh, when I mix it well enough, um, it should be of a certain consistency. We should be able to see the color somewhat once it's mixed all together. And afterwards, uh, we will form a dough out of this. Alright, so once you've got momentum going um, in making your uh, dough, uh, what you want to do next um, is uh, you want to take a little bit of water and you want to add it to the mixture so that the dough is all nice and sticky. So I'm just going to do this. That should be good to start. And you can put in however much uh, water you want to um, if you feel um, it's good enough to make uh, your pakoda. So uh, you have to add enough water um, to uh, sort of mix it all together and then you uh, just uh, use the dough that you currently have and make like little bowls of the pakotas. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate later. So after adding a fair amount of water, it should look something like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my baking soda. I'm going to add it to the mixture, just like that. And I'm going to mix this uh, with my hands. Um, now I'm not going to show this on camera because obviously I don't want my hands to be sticky when I turn the camera off. So um, after you add the baking soda, you just got to mix it with your hands and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. I'll see you then. Alright, so once you've unneeded your dough, it should look something like this. As you can see, it's a nice uh, pink blob, which is what you want. You can see the veggies. So what we're going to do now um, is uh, we're going to take some oil. I'm going to take a spoon and I'm just going to pour it onto my hands like this. I'm going to rub my hands together now that I have oil in it on them. So, like that. And uh, I'm going to take some of this uh, dough mixture. And this uh, size should be a good portion for making a pakoda, an individual pakoda. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll it into a ball like this. And as you can see, it's all nice and round. And I'm going to put it on the plate over here. And you just want to keep repeating this process until you're all out of the uh, dough. It should be soon. Okay, and as you can see, I've made uh, all of my uh, pakotas right here. And they're ready to be cooked. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill up a pan with uh, oil, hot oil. And uh, afterwards, I will place uh, my pakotas inside. Okay, so as you can see, our oil is nice and hot now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my pakotas that I made. Okay, so as you can see, um, I put my pakotas inside here. And then we're just going to fry for a bit. And we're just going to put them on the plate when we're done. Okay, so as you can see, they're all nice and hot. And they're ready to be cooked. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take uh, my pakotas that I made. And we're just going to fry for a bit. And we're just going to put them on the plate each one we're done. So once you've uh, fried your pakotas, they should look something like this. Don't they look good? And uh, I'm going to do a taste test and I'll tell you what I think of them. Alright, let's see These are really good. Tastes nice and crispy. Tastes all the veggies and the flour very well. All the sauces are nice as well. It's good. And this is the finished product on our plates, served with some nice corn on the cob. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode.